Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, uh, we're going through a deck that I was forced to build, and I did it, and when I played it on Arena, I felt like I wasn't even playing Magic. <laughs> but before we get into it, we're going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it, and the link will be down below. Today, we are going through Pray to Me. That's right, it's a Shrines deck. Everyone makes them, and we're just I'm just throwing my little flare into it and see how it goes. And it actually kind of works, sadly. <laughs> but uh, with that, we'll get into it. Uh, the first creature, of course, is Fae of Wishes. It's one in a blue, one four. Uh, so it has flying, pay two, discard two cards, return Fae of Wishes to your hand. And why you want to do that is because it has granted. It's three in a blue, sorcery, adventure. You may choose a non-creature card from outside the game, reveal it, and put it in your hand. And with shrines, you basically have one of each shrine in your sideboard. So whatever shrine you need at the moment, then you go get it. Most of the time, it's usually just the five color one. So you can go get all the shrines from everywhere. So it's not too bad. Uh, next up is the Realm Cloak Giant. He is two white and five for a seven, seven vigilance. And he's got adventure mode, which is cast off, which is three and two white. Destroy all non-giant creatures. So you need your board wipe and your pick dude. So might as well. That, that's pretty much what it is. And for shrines, that's you're literally just playing a control deck that bleeds and you just win because of that. The next one is Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Of course, it's the white shrine. Legendary enchantment. So you pay five and a white tap target creature. Sounds terrible, but this ability costs one less to activate for each shrine you control. So even late game to do three, to pay three or two is not too bad, especially when they have one creature out. Yeah. Next up is Heartless Act. It is a black and one for an instant. You choose one. Destroy target creature with no counters on it or remove up to three counters from target creature. Yep. Uh, now, of course, this can be easily replaced with Eliminate, but I think something that just costs two that destroys something almost immediately is pretty good. And I was playing it against Nyssa and to be remove three counters from a land and killing it is also pretty cute. Uh, one of the things that help you get there is Omen of the Sea. It's one in a blue enchantment with Flash. Enters the battlefield, scry two, draw a card, and then you pay three, sacrifice it to draw uh, scry two. So you know what's coming up and hopefully get there. Next up is Sanctum of Stone Fangs. It is a black and one for a legendary shrine, the black shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of shrines you control. So this is your bleeder effect. So the more shrines you get out, the more they take damage. Yep, and this is pretty much your win con here. And the fact that it says pre-combat main phase will actually benefit you for the, the five color shrine we'll get to. But to get there is Idyllic Tutor. It's two and a white sorcery. Search your library for enchantment, reveal it and put it in your hand. That's it, go dig up a shrine. Yeah, simple as that. Uh, next is Mythos of Nithroi. He is a black and two for an instant. Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature. Or if white and green were played, you may... Or if white and green was spent to cast a spell. So you get to kill a creature or otherwise a non-land permanent. Yeah, yeah, which is very helpful against good old planeswalkers for three. The uh, next one is Omen of the Sun. It's two and a white enchantment flash. And here's the battlefield, create two white blockers for you. And then you gain two life. So it also helps sustain that. And then of course, two and a white sacrifices scry two. Help you dig in. And next we got Sanctum of the Fruitful Harvest, which is the green shrine. It is a green and two for at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. Yeah, it just helps you mana rip and hopefully you just add white to do a board wipe real quick, especially early game. Yeah, it really helps. Next one is Sanctum of the Shattered Heights. It's two in a red. Uh, it costs one, so you pay one, discard a land or a shrine card. It deals X damage to target creature or planes where X is the number of shrines you control. And the fact that oh, if you're flooding out, you just keep holding your lands to destroy the battlefield. Especially, it's just it comes in handy way more than you'd actually think. Yeah. Next is Sanctum of Calm Waters. It is a blue and three. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may draw X where X is the number of shrines you control. If you do, discard a card. So, you just get free card advantage. Yeah. And, like, it generates cards. It's not just one for ones. It's, like, four for ones. Yeah. And that's super strong in anything like it's this. It's insane. When you <clears throat> just plot this down as fast as possible. Now, of course, to help you need four copies of this guy, Shadow of the Sky. It's two and two white. Each player you control uh, with power four graveyard draws a card, then destroys all creatures. You, you don't care what they draw, you just want to kill the board as fast as possible. And then uh, we got Sanctum of All, which is one of each color. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library and or graveyard for a shrine and put it into the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. 
If an ability or another shrine you control triggers while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. Yes. So if you have all six and you get during your pre-combat main phase, you're like, cool, black shrine, you lose double life. Yeah. And that's why the pre-combat is the key word, because you play this on your upkeep, you go get it from the graveyard or your, or your deck, play the black shrine, and then it triggers, everything triggers, so therefore you, no matter what, if the turn before they destroy the black shrine, you go get it from the graveyard and then you still gain that life. Like, I played this against, uh, I think, Bant Ramp with Ugin destroying all my shrines. I played this and I just came back because I immediately just grabbed all the shrines from the graveyard, kill them all, and then done. Super good. Yeah, and that's it. It's really just a solid, hey, shrines, get there. <laughs> and uh, with it being five colors, I don't know how to do it mostly. I did not consult the, the Rainbow <laughs> Rainmaker here. So I just did two of every shock line. So it's a uh, blood crypt, breeding pool, godless shrine, hollowed fountain, and then we have also one of each of the trinomes. So Endathia, trinome, Ketria trinome, and then Overgrown tomb, uh, Rodgrin trinome, Sacred Foundry, uh, Savi trinome, Steam vents, Stomping grounds, <laughs> Temple garden, Watery grave, Zagoth trinome. Yeah. So all the multicolor lands is what you're running. Yeah. Like, Every you're playing all the colors, so you need all the colors. You need it, and I feel like that's the way to do it. And no basics. I'm sorry. I know I I'm breaking that rule, but this is it's too terrible not to miss out on multicolor yeah. for yeah. sure. You need as many colors as you can make, and that's why you use all the shrines and or the uh, triumphs and shocks. Yeah, and the fact that you gain life with the black shrine, even taking two or four, six doesn't matter as long as you have that in your hand most of the time at the beginning of the game. It really helps out for sure. Uh, with that, like I said, no no honorable mentions today, but you just basically put the shrines and sideboard and then more board life so you can get it with the fatal wishes. And yeah, then you just sit there and let Arena do everything for you. <laughs> That's why I feel like it, I don't even play magic. I just play a card and then it all does the triggers and I'm just sitting there. Just listen to podcasts <laughs> while, while playing magic. But with that, uh, the, the deck list will be down below and hopefully you enjoyed your stay at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Higgs. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.